All right, welcome to uh, another edition of SVG's On the Gridiron series. Uh, we're just trying to highlight, hey, these venues are staying as, as busy as possibly can. And uh, yeah, there might not be uh, fans in the stands at all times, but it doesn't mean there isn't content being created, uh, both for fans streaming and, and uh, hopefully at some point for fans in the stadium. We are joined by a very good friend, very longtime friend of SVG, Mike Bonner. He's director and executive producer of Game Presentation for the Carolina Panthers. Mike, how are you? I'm good, Jason. Thanks for having me. Always always uh, happy to do stuff with SVG. Cool. Well, we love doing stuff with you. And, uh, you know, you have had quite an inter interesting experience because uh, previous to this season, uh, you were leading up a game day presentation at the University of Notre Dame and shifted to the Panthers just before this whole pandemic thing hit. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the offseason. How did you operate – uh, for things like draft and, you know, the off-season transactions and, and that type of thing. How did you kind of shift into this Panthers mode? Yeah, so uh, I'll start where, where, where you left off there. Uh, I started with the Panthers uh, late January, and things were, you know, just moving along. Uh, standard operating procedure, kind of getting to know the new staff and how things operate here. And then mid-March, COVID hit, and we were told, you know, go work from home. Didn't know how long that was going to be. Uh, but home for me at that time was still South Bend, Indiana, since my uh, wife and children were back there finishing out the school year. So uh, I went back to South Bend to go work for the Carolina Panthers, because, of course, that's what everyone does. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, uh, started working for home, did a lot of teams meetings, uh, a lot of scenario planning. Um, and then we started to uh, truly get into remote production. Um, we did a draft show live stream uh, throughout the entirety of the NFL draft. I think it was a four hour show uh, where we had our talent um, that was joining us via teams, uh, Kristen Balboni, and we had Jake DeLome uh, who was joining us uh, from his home in, in um, uh, Louisiana. Um, and then we had a, a slew of guests, including, um, you know, the Avid brothers and the mayor of, of Charlotte, uh, and oh yeah, by the way, Steph Curry too. Sure. So, um, you know, again, all of the guests that you're able to bring in when you do it virtually, um, it was actually pretty cool. Um, I did come in for that to the control room. We utilized the control room space. We masked up big time for that, you know, and, um, you know, did what we had to do. And uh, it was a really cool live stream. Again, learning so much out of the box thinking uh, during these crazy times, but um, you know, it was a, a very cool experience. Uh, then from there, we had our schedule release, which we did a live stream for that. Uh, that was a shorter show. It was about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, that I did from South Bend. Uh, funny thing wow. is that I lost my Wi-Fi at one point and had to run over to my neighbors. Uh, so I sat in their back <laughs> porch and stole their Wi-Fi and, you know, did what we had to. But um, that was a, another great experience that we had really cool uh, situation where we brought in uh, guests from other teams. So, you know, we had um, a Honey Badger, Ty Tyron Matthew, join us with Christian McCaffrey. And he kind of had a, you know, oh, cool. head to head type thing. Um, Cameron Brake joined us from the Bucks, and I think he was with K1 Short. Uh, so there was really like kind of cool um, synergy you had there for someone from the Panthers and then someone from the opponent uh, that, that joined us for that. Again, that was all done remotely. Um, all, all over uh, teams, and um, it was it was uh, really cool. Um, and then, you know, when we finally were able to slowly come back into the building, and believe me, we still have a lot of our front office people still working remotely, but when we were able to come back into the building, um, that's when, you know, the, the uh, focus turned to training camp and getting ready for that. We uh, did training camp live streams every day, um, utilizing our control room and our studio that's downstairs. But there, you know, we were using um, TVU for feeds that we were getting remotely from uh, our practice facility, which is here, but it's it's a little ways away. We don't have connectivity over there. So that's why TVU is really our friend. And that's where we're utilizing the studio because of the connectivity. Right. Um, other really interesting things, you know, um, we did our, uh, production day um, in July uh, with our players, and that was all done remotely 
I was actually visiting family back in New Jersey. <laughs> so for two days, I was in New Jersey. I think one I did from my old bedroom. The other one I did from my sister's house where my niece had a, a birthday party. And I, you know, talked virtually to our players and directed them. And we had, you know, a couple camera ops that were tier two that were able to be there in front of the players. But we had, uh, you know, a bunch of producers, directors that were doing stuff remotely. Um, and the funny thing is because the players have been doing their meetings that way, it wasn't weird to them, you know? Sure. So uh, I, I must say that it would have been pretty cool for a fan to watch something like that, some kind of stream like that, where I was like, wait, that's Christian McCaffrey right now live in front of me. I, I, I would be lying if I didn't say that uh, my 16 uh, year old nephew didn't sneak into the room while I was uh, doing it, you know, in the middle of the, uh, you know, production day shoot with Christian McCaffrey, you know, because it was pretty cool. So, yeah, all, so you know, that's the modern that, day. Uh, that's the COVID world that we live in, right? You're just exactly. like, yeah, I guess we're doing this. Okay, great. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Um, so you guys were extremely busy, like you said, the off season, even if you weren't necessarily uh, in the control room for most of it, uh, you guys got a lot of content out of there. Uh, now we got the season going and uh, it, Injuries aside, uh, you, you guys have a, a job to do, and, uh, and that is to serve, you know, not just the, the team on site, but potentially fans down the road. So let's talk a little bit about there were no preseason games this year. Um, this is your first time, you know, doing a show in that venue. What was that like, and how did you guys kind of try to prepare without those dress rehearsals that preseason usually affords you? Yeah, so we did a lot of scenario planning, uh, kind of going through all the – you know, if we were to have fans, if we we're, you know, to have limited fans, suites only, what, what would our, our game day makeup look like? Um, we were very fortunate in, in that we had um, a broadcast practice that we did. So it was a two hour broadcast. We worked with our friends at Raycom. Uh, it aired locally here and then in uh, 12 other affiliates that we did. And that was a great opportunity to kind of run through a dress rehearsal. Um, you know, we, we ran the, the crowd noise, we had our music, we ran features, um, you know, we had uh, virtual fans that we brought in. Uh, so we were able to w work through a lot of that stuff. You know, we used our in-game cameras um, and, and that was a pretty cool dress rehearsal. But then um, our coach and, and the coaching staff has been fantastic. The communication has been incredible with them. Um, he wanted to do practices inside the stadium. Okay. So with that, you know, he asked for all the bells and whistles that we would normally do. So, you know, we were running replays for practices. You know, we were, um, you know, uh, we had the crowd noise going. Um, you know, we treated it as much like uh, a preseason game that we could. They actually ran in for halftime, um, oh, cool. you know, and, and then came back out, you know. So um, it was great that football worked with us on that. And, and I don't think we were the only team who did things like that because you were trying to work out so many other things, you know, they were trying to work out their communication. They were trying to work out, you know, their social distancing and in booths upstairs with their coaches. So um, it was a really great cross-functional way of, of getting everyone reps and, and doing uh, a dress rehearsal. That's great. Very cool. So now that the season is, is uh, off and going, um, what are you guys creating in terms of content, whether that's pre and post game, uh, obviously within the game, you still have to serve, you know, the team's needs and then yeah, fingers crossed, maybe some fans later on, but what's keeping you guys busy in terms of content creation right now? Uh, so one thing we went really big on um, because of the, our first game was played with no fans. We're hoping that we get, you know, fans back soon, whether that's our next game, October 4th, or then the game after that, we're not sure yet. Um, so we went big on pregame. We did an hour long pregame show. It was a great opportunity to show our fans what they're missing. We ran feature content in there. We ran the <clears throat> big bow box shuffle presented by Bojangles. We ran, um, you know, our, our pregame warmups, the, you know, the things that the fans would love to see on game day, we brought that to them. You know, you can have pregame shows that you watch on Fox or CBS, but they may just give you a small little glimpse, a look live into a stadium. You know, we gave you an hour long, it was a studio show, and then we utilized our stadium cameras um, and went heavy on our pregame warmups. Um, and, and it was great to be able to give back 
sponsor content there where there were eyeballs. There were a lot of eyeballs on it. Sure. Um, you were just shifting the platform that, that it was being seen on. Um, it was well received. We plan on doing it uh, before every uh, home game, no matter what the capacities are that we have. Um, because again, no matter if it's, if it's a, a limited capacity, there's still a lot of fans that aren't getting it. And we want to make sure that we're delivering that to them. So, you know, we, um, we did our, our uh, pregame show. We ran a show uh, in game. It was weird. There was content that you didn't run because you needed fans for it. You know, yeah. um, it's hard to do a flex cam when you don't have fans in the building, you know, <laughs> um, but we were able to bring in virtual fans. So we had a virtual fan room, uh, which was really successful um, and, and quite a commitment for the fans who participated in it because they were with us for the pregame show. They were with us in game. Um, so it was, it was really neat to see. Uh, we did a really cool feature with a security guard here who he's been an employee for over 25 years. And uh, because of COVID, uh, he can't really come back. It's not, not the safest of environment for someone uh, like John. And, and so we did this John Coleman feature uh, and we brought John in live uh, virtually, um, you know, where there he was waving from his home, you know, and our players were able to see him. So, you know, again, it's just out of the box thinking um, how you can do things just in this COVID world a little bit differently um, and try to be creative along the way. Yeah. And there's no question that things are different, but you can still get those creative juices flowing. Uh, it's just like you said, maybe shifting the outlet a little bit um, in terms of helping the team out and that type of thing, uh, you know, operations, that type of thing. Of course, you're still helping out with replays and that type of thing. Correct. Yeah. So it, like I said earlier, it's, it's extremely cross-functional and it goes beyond just football. I mean, our stadium ops folks and getting the messaging out of, you know, what our planning is when we do get fans back, um, you know, working with our ticketing folks of, you know, even there of uh, where they're going to put fans and how that, you know, may work with things like the operational zone and, and, you know, other things that, that are just a little different now. And then of course, football, um, you know, we work closely with football. Football has to utilize spaces they've never used before here in the stadium in order to do proper social distancing. So where they were maybe meeting in a team room, a small team room in football's own area, now they're meeting on our, you know, in, in one of our lounge areas on the 300 level, the 400 level. Right. Um, that means that even the way that we get to where we need to go has to be different so that we don't interact with the players. Um, you know, we're giving them uh, in-house TV channels that now they're able to look at scheduling or, you know, or, or coaches are able to use, um, you know, for, for different things and messaging that they want to get out. I mean, we even have provided football with uh, this foghorn sound effect that moving from one meeting to the next, there's someone in football operations who from, from his phone has the ability to create a sound <laughs> effect that you're hearing throughout this stadium. So. Um, we work very closely with football, uh, and obviously replays are really important in what we do, uh, and, and is the, the one thing that you could do at this time that truly helps you, uh, try to get a home field advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad to see that you and, uh, and your new team are, are keeping busy, uh, still creating the content, still serving Panther fans. And let's hope that uh, the next time we talk, we're talking about how you're serving fans inside the stadium. But uh, Mike, always appreciate it and know how busy you are. So thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it, Jason. Thanks so much.